Hello everyone and welcome to Cy Falls High School, home of the 2017 Boys State Basketball Champions. This week, we pay a very special tribute to the state champs as we go behind the scenes of a truly remarkable playoff run. It was indeed a golden season. I mean, the starting five, they're all juniors? Are you kidding me? These guys leave it on the floor every night. It's a team that's tough to beat. Let's seriously ask ourselves, can this Cy Falls team get to state? I just really don't know. This team is young. Can they maintain their composure in close games? Hey, let me tell you something. This South Falls team is the truth. Just wait and see what they do in the playoffs. It would be amazing um, for everyone on our team, and not just everybody, everyone else uh, in our community, in our school, that can't play on the court with us. So this is for all, everybody? This is for everybody, yes. In Houston, Texas, Cypress Falls High School opened the doors for the first time in 1992 on the northwest side of town. It's one of 12 high schools in the Cypress Fairbanks Independent School District. Within Cy Fair ISD, there has only been one boys team to ever win state, and that was Cypress Fair High School back in 1971. It will mean a lot to me, my teammates, and all of Cypress and the school especially, because it's something that nobody has ever done here for boys. I mean, it was one of our goals in the beginning of the season, and uh, it feels really great and to get one step closer to that goal. With 10 district championships, the Golden Eagles basketball team has never surpassed the third round of the playoffs. Even with a rich tradition in sports at Cypress Falls, the school's only state championship comes from volleyball back in 2000. I've been saying all this week, it's really bigger than us. You know, we're representing more than us. We're representing the community, the school, and now we're representing the city. With the hundreds of faculty and staff, and the 3,542 students at Cy Falls. On this day, the energy couldn't be any higher. Come on, the focus would be on just 11 of those students and a handful of coaches. The basketball team would head to state for the first time in school history. With everyone celebrating and showing their support, a path led them through the school and out to the bus. It is said that ambition is the path to success. Persistence is the vehicle you arrive in. Ambition is what kept their path alive. If they didn't show that in the first round of the playoffs against Lamar, that bus you see there, the vehicle of persistence, it would have never arrived. With 28 victories in 31 games, including an 18-game winning streak. The number four seeded Lamar Texans, up by three, with three seconds remaining, Cy Falls found themselves on the brink of an early elimination. Um, Coach Flores drew up a good play in the huddle, and everything broke down. And as I was trying to get the ball to Nigel, three defenders trapped me, and then I ball faked, and they all ran away. And I just had a wide open shot, and I shot it from there. And then history was made after that. Side falls, needs a three. We're down to three, two, one. Wesley lets it go, and it's good. Incredible. What a shot. We're going to overtime. It's one of those shots that you play around when you're in a gym by yourself. Just one, two, three, and just shoot it. Yeah, you know, when that moment came, I just felt, uh, 
going into overtime, you know, we definitely had the momentum on our side. You know, Andrew hadn't, he'd been taking good shots, but he hadn't been able to, to knock them down. And he came out and hit the first three to start overtime. And I think everybody hearing me say that to him and then him following through on it just gave us the, the confidence and the momentum to, to win the game in overtime. You know, they're just their will to win and just always finding ways. And we always talk about just playing for 32. And uh, in that case, we had to play for 32 and then a little bit more. In round two of the playoffs, the Golden Eagles would take care of business, eliminating Fort Bend Travis, setting the stage for their toughest matchup yet, the state's fifth-ranked team, the Sam Houston Tigers. Sam Houston was undersized, but their heart wasn't. The Tigers' star point guard, Kendrick Davis, led them all year and didn't plan on stopping here. This was a scrappy matchup. In the final seconds, big free throws were at stake for Trajan Wesley, needing both to go in to tie the game. Before I was going to take the free throws, coach called a timeout, and I went to the huddle, and Coach Forrest was saying after I make these two free throws, we got to get a stop. And he just put it in my head that I was going to make these both free throws. All right, Wesley makes the first free throw. This is for the tie. Seven seconds to go, and it's good. We are tied at 51. Sam Houston now. Inbound, Kendrick Davis bring it down court across the midcourt line. It's knocked away by Wesley. A mad scramble, and would you believe Side Falls is going to overtime again? Big shots like this from Zach Stevenson would propel the Golden Eagles into their second overtime victory in three games. And in an overtime thriller, Side Falls wins 63 57. They're heading to the regional tournament for the first time. If you follow the Houston basketball scene, the name Fabian White will sound all too familiar. The 6'9 University of Houston commit was looking to lead the Atascacita Eagles back to state. As they looked to be a formidable opponent, the well-executed team basketball from Cy Falls would be too much in the end for Atascacita. White's game high 23 points wasn't enough. The Golden Eagles would pull away late with a 55-45 victory, advancing to the Class 6A Region 3 Finals. With a berth to state on the line, the competition wouldn't get any easier. Facing their third top 10 opponent in the playoffs, the George Bush Broncos. They had quick sensational guards that could score with ease. Cy Falls had their own sensational guard that would step up. The aging sensation Andrew Wynn. How'd you get that name, the nickname, Asian Sensation? Well, in middle school, a seventh grade game, I was just running down the court, I had just shot a three, and one of my classmates just yelled it out, and I thought it was pretty cool, so it's kind of stuck with me since then. Wynn stopped the Broncos' momentum before the half with a deep three to get the Golden Eagle fans back on their feet. Wynn would twist and turn his way for a game-high 21 points. Side Falls would make school history with a 73-63 victory and their first berth to the state basketball tournament. Well, they made it. Their first time to state, holding a winning streak of 23 victories in a row. Cy Falls entered the state Final Four as an underdog against nationally ranked Dallas Skyline. Marcus Gary, a McDonald's All-American and Kansas Jayhawk recruit, led the Skyline Raiders to a 35-1 record. Skyline stall tactics got them past number one unbeaten Klein Forest in the regional finals. Hoping the strategy would work against the Golden Eagles, for Side Falls, it would be their biggest challenge all season. Down 2018 at halftime, head coach Richard Flores needed to make some adjustments. Dang it, we're all right, let's go, come on. Good job right there. Here we go, here we go, come on. 
All right, so listen to me. I'm going to tell you why we're down, okay? We're three from 11 from layups, okay? All right, right at the rim. They've got good length, but we face teams that have good length, okay? So you guys trade, just deliver it to the rim, okay? I know you're getting hit just a little bit, but you're not getting hammered. That's why we're not getting the call. Three, four, 11, just from layups. If we're six from 11, then we're up by four right now, okay? And we're only down by two, okay? Hey, we got to be active. Like, Zach, y'all are like six feet away from the guy. Hey, Tennessee closeouts every time. Don't just stand here and make the, let them be comfortable out there. Hey, high to wide, active feet, active feet, stunt, stunt, stunt. Hey, our game plan was a ball movement, multiple paint touches, and hey, we've gotten multiple paint touches. I think that we're going to continue to get those, and we'll finish, okay? Let's make it happen right here. Let's go. Come on. Here we go. One, two, three. Cypoles would adapt to Skyline's style of play. Staying sound on defense, this game would go into overtime. However, not just one overtime, but two. With 59 seconds remaining in the second overtime, Wesley made a tough layup, tying it at 41. Garrett was unable to convert on the last possession for Skyline to take the lead. And once again, this game went into another overtime. Our mindset is like, we're never out of any game. You know, we could be down with two minutes left. Uh, we're down by 10. We're still in every game because of the talent we have around us. We just stay calm and composed, listen to Coach Flores and the game plan and just execute at the end of the game. In the third overtime, number three Wesley would give the Raiders a chance after being called for a crucial traveling violation with 11 seconds remaining. Garrett would get fouled and then have to shoot two of the biggest free throws he would ever take. So after missing the first free throw, this to cut the lead to one, and it's no good. Garrett has it, his shot, it's off. Kendall Scott grabs it, and he's fouled. Oh, my. Kendall Scott would go to the line, making one of two, giving side falls a 46-43 lead with 1.3 seconds left. Here's the inbound. It's Garrett. He lets it fly, and no. Side falls has advanced to the state final. It all started in that first round. We look up into the stands and see nothing but green and gold. Uh, the student body has been terrific throughout this playoff run. Um, see our administration there, you know, all congratulating the kids, you know, after the game. And the kids know going in, into the game, they've had consistent uh, support throughout this building. So what would a state championship mean to you guys? Wow, that would be just a, a great moment, you know, and uh, it would be a, a perfect ending to a, a great season so far. It's down to one game in high school basketball in the state of Texas, the 6A state championship coming up in just a few minutes. The Golden Eagles from Cypress Falls to the greater Houston area taking on the Thunderbirds of San Antonio Wagner. As 15,000 people entered the Alamo Dome to watch the Class 6A boys state championship game, Cy Falls holding a 24 game win streak were down to their last test. Cy Falls last night had to go into triple overtime to beat a great Dallas Skyline team. They had three players play 44 minutes. How are they going to react tonight against a much fresher San Antonio Wagner ball club? Not too many people expected them to make it to this stage. That's why resilience is all about being able to overcome the unexpected. Sustainability is about survival. The goal of resilience is to thrive. The Eagles would have to thrive against a San Antonio Wagner team looking to hold up a state trophy in their hometown. TABC Class 6A Player of the Year, Tristan Clark was hoping to leave a lasting legacy for the Thunderbirds before he takes his game to the next level at Baylor. Clark would make his presence known as he scored 10 points in the first eight minutes. Wagner would have the momentum early, leading 19-11 after one. 
In the second quarter, the leading scorer for the Eagles all year long, Nigel Hawkins, would score seven points in a tight defensive eight minutes. The Golden Eagles held Wagner to only four points in the quarter and go into halftime with the game tied at 23. Hey, now we make adjustments, okay? All right, and we've always been that better team in that third quarter and that fourth quarter to make adjustments, okay? So take a look here, guys, all right? We're here, okay? Here, here, and if four has the ball, we're there. Like I told you in that timeout, hey, I thought the three that you took was good. It really kind of stretched him out. I mean, you came out right away, and, and then you hit this shot, and you hit a three, so now he's, you're gonna stretch him out. So as we continue to fight, Okay, and we continue to block out and we continue to dig and get steals. Six? Yes. Okay, hey, six steals and probably four of those in the, in the second quarter. Kendall, you've got a couple of deflections, okay? So guys gotta continue to do that, all right? Here we go, let's go, right here, come on. Really good on our block outs and let's get out and run right here. Here we go, one, two, three. Eagles. We trust each other, we just believe if somebody messes up then somebody else can make up for it. We really like each other on and off the court, and it, it makes it it makes things easier on the court. And um, when our back's against the wall, we know we got to come together and we're going to beat through the wall. Cy Falls, one half away from their first basketball state championship. The students, faculty, family, and friends could almost taste it. In the stands was also an original Golden Eagle, Jim Drought, who started the basketball program back in 1992. You know, Coach Drought, Coach Eaton was there, and guys, I know that they're no, they're no longer here, but they're always visible. Coach Drought, you know, even coached the guys in the RCS shootout, and I, I want the guys to always know the history of this program and uh, the success that we've had. After 593 wins, his head coaching legacy will forever stay intact after a phenomenal 22 years. The team on the court would feed off the energetic atmosphere, going on a 15-4 run, capitalizing from the outside. Advantage up four, looking for a five-point lead, and they do get it. How about that shot by DJ Weaver? And the inside as well. Win. Trying to drive through and a great move to the bucket by the junior guard. Rodney Clark, the head coach for Wagner, had seen enough as Cy Falls took a 38-30 lead into the fourth quarter. All the basketball they had played this season, technically 1,236 minutes, this last eight would resonate the loudest. It starts from the coach down to the players. I believe Coach Flores' mindset has just, it's leveled us all out to have a, just a balanced idea of what we need to do. And I think one of the things that makes them special is that they genuinely want to see each other succeed. And so whether they're making a shot or they've made the pass for their teammates to knock it down, they're, they're happy to see everybody be successful. I just love playing with them, love getting better with them each and every day. And Love seeing us progress as a team, as a whole unit. We're like brothers and as a family, and we trust each other. And we've been through a lot of ups and downs, but at the end of the day, we end up on top. The Golden Eagles would find their way to the top indeed, sinking 17 of their 22 free throws in the fourth. Trajan Wesley would make 11 of his 15 fourth quarter points from the free throw line, as he would be a terror against Wagner. Cy Falls. Staying poised and calm. The clutch free throw shooting in the final minutes would seal the victory 63 57 as the clock hit zero. Cypress Falls High School, UIL 6A Boys State Basketball Champions. One of a kind emotions and joy overwhelmed the players, coaches, and everyone that played a part in this magical season. Like when the horn went off and we had more, like we won the game, it was just, your mind was just everywhere. You just wanted to say like, congratulations, love you bros, to your teams, your coaches, you just, it's, it's a great feeling. Like when they say it's hard to put into words what, the, what you're feeling, it really is. Like, it was just an unbelievable feeling, honestly. 
it's a blessing, man. To do that in front of that crowd for our city, for Cyprus, you know, it's an amazing feel. I can't, no one could ever take that away from us. I'm so grateful that I'm on this team of a group of great guys who are all family instead of just a guy, a group of guys that just want to play basketball. <laughs> This win had a heavier impact on some of the Eagles. Nigel Hawkins made it a goal to be MVP, and he rightfully became it. Ever since last year, when we got knocked out, it was one of my goals, and I put it on, uh, put it above my bed on the note card, and I worked hard for it, and it's a blessing, and I couldn't do it without my teammates. Coach Flores wasn't just sharing his championship with his team, but also his wife, Virginia, who coached the Side Woods girls basketball team to state in 2015. You know, she is my biggest supporter. You know, on the sidelines, she's cool and calm, but there's been some pictures of her with her head down, uh, clenched fist and everything, and uh, well, it's a little bit special. We both get to wear our rings now. I know how hard he has worked. I know how hard his coaches have worked, how hard his kids have worked. Um, and to see it come to fruition, and anybody that even gets to this point knows how hard it is just to get here, but then to get here, triple overtime, to then get to this stage and to win it, I think speaks volumes about the program. Touched by this moment the most was Trajan Weston, who lost his mother 10 years ago on this exact day, making this truly a moment to cherish. Just a moment I can share with my dad and just tell him how much he loved me and how much my mom was watching the whole time and especially in the playoffs, especially in that skyline and the San Antonio Wagner game, I really felt her presence. Knowing that it was her 10th year anniversary on that day, something I can just cherish and share with my family one day. The basketball team and school were one big family, sharing moments and memories that will never be forgotten. One thing we can't forget, the starting five are all juniors. The question that comes to be asked now can they do it again? Every time I wake up and see that medal and that ring, I'm going to think about it all the time. Every time I scroll through my phone and see those pictures, it's just memories, ever everlasting memories.